Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles. My name is Carlos Casanova and we're here in Las Vegas at the Gartner Data Center Conference. We're here with my co-host Charlie Betts. Carlos. And I'm Jed Afano from Hypergrid. Hey, welcome, you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for um, having me. So I'm just, you know, my understanding is that Hypergrid has had uh, a couple of big announcements in the last, what, two, three weeks or so. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what, what you guys have done and where we're going? Uh, sure, sure. So uh, Hypergrid uh, recently announced uh, HyperCloud, which is the uh, full stack hybrid cloud uh, platform delivered on premise uh, with application platform services uh, that can be available on any cloud or infrastructure. Um, and the idea is that this, um, platform is available via a consumption model. So you pay as you go, not more than that. So what we're trying to do is deliver cloud on-premises um, in order to allow uh, organizations to really consume IT instead of building IT. Right. Um, and, a, and a more recent announcement was that uh, the DevOps and cloud automation uh, piece of HyperCloud, uh, it's a platform called HyperForm. Um, that uh, we recently announced that it was uh, it became available as part of the uh, Azure Microsoft Azure marketplace um, and the idea there is that um, we want to enable um, organizations to what we call lift containerize and shift okay. so that they can uh, move their existing apps onto containers and then deploy them onto Azure um, or any other cloud yeah. Wow. Oh, DevOps, mm -hmm. DevOps piece sounds really I'd exciting. I'd love to hear that. We'll ask more about that in a bit. But I want to understand uh, the basic financial model, of course. Um, so it's your capital in somebody's data center, and they pay, as, they, they pay on a consumption basis. That's exactly right. Okay. So um, basically, we own the hardware. Mm -hmm. We uh, ship that full stack platform, but uh, the organization can pay as they go based on uh, different metrics, so they can pick uh, virtual desktops, VDIs, or containers, or VMs, uh, or other kinds of metrics uh, mm -hmm. uh, that basically are more relevant to the way they consume IT. Okay. okay. And yeah. do you use the term uh, convergence or hyperconverged, or is that you haven't? Is that? You yeah. Uh, so uh, hyperconverged uh, to us is more like a vehicle to deliver the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we are trying to steer away from. Uh, saying that you know, to us, it's just a use case. You know, we're doing mm -hmm. hyperconverged as a service, uh, but we're doing a lot more than that. Because if you look at what a what has drawn people to the public cloud, it's uh, it's not really the infrastructure service, right? Uh, in one of the Gartner sessions, it was mentioned that you know the IAS piece, the infrastructure as a service piece, is just a horsepower for delivering the apps, right? Right. So with us, um, we've, we have very sophisticated um, application modeling and deployment uh, tool set that allows you to deliver the platform and application services uh, that can really bridge you know, the, the development world with the IT world and, and really allow you to consume um, the infrastructure uh, in an efficient uh, way for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was the, the word that I was just thinking as you were speaking today. I'm, I'm thinking you know, the efficiencies are there. You know, you're not looking into, you know, the, the huge build out the, in the guessing, guesswork, you know, best guesstimation, right, that we may be there in two years versus five years. So it, it seems like the, the growth uh, potential is there as you need it. Exactly. And uh, basically, if you look at, uh, there was a recent survey I think it was Harvey Nash uh, that interviewed a bunch of CEO, uh, CIOs, and the three biggest challenges they face is uh, basically being able to provide uh, agile infrastructure, being able to lower the operational expenses, and just struggling with the existing skill sets in the organizations to um, really deliver those kinds of services, right? So if, uh, if they can get a solution that can really simplify that journey, uh, with the existing skill sets, uh, then uh, we're really sort of bridging that gap and allowing them to accelerate the, de the delivery of these services uh, to their the different business users. I'd imagine there's some retraining involved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for, you know, but but yeah. It, it's, this, was, this is within the grasp of the, the uh, typical INO professional. They can start to understand you know, how, to, how to be effective with this. I mean, I really think that that agile infrastructure thing is so important. I, I mean, I remember you, know, you, you would be in these weeks, months long, 
you know, back and forth engineering consultations and you had to do it with network and you had to do it with storage and you had to do it with compute. If you were lucky, you had an infrastructure architect who was trying to drive all of them to resolution, but even they might get wrapped around the axle sometimes. And, you know, you, 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 we just can't afford that kind of delay in standing up new application services in this day and age. Well, and the thing, I'm thinking, you know, the lead time, you know, having, you know, yeah. survived that space for a while. Again, you were looking at, I think we're looking at this business application at the end of next year. I have to start looking for budget because that timing never works, right? Yeah. Because we're always off, <laughs> off cycle. So I have to get you know, the network engineer, the storage mm -hmm. engineer, the, all the engineers around, give them some approximation of what I think I was told and it was total, I don't think we ever got it right. No, we we, we hope that the differential on where we go, we were over and stuff. So, yeah, yeah so I mean, this, you know, these ca kind of capabilities just seem to be a natural fit to, to allowing companies to take what, you know, I think you said it earlier, is use what you need and not, you know, not anything more. Precisely. And, and, you know, these kinds of challenges is exactly what has, um, you know, forced a lot of uh, organizations and teams to start using the public cloud because right. they start yeah. working with IT and all these challenges you guys mentioned and all of a sudden they're like, you know what, screw this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go straight I to the public cloud. swipe a credit card and just define it as code. Exactly. And, and, and yeah. you know, the thing is like the public cloud gives you the, these app services out of box. You know, you right. need a database, hey, use mm -hmm. database as a service. You need a load balancer, it's a load balancer as a service. So that's exactly what we're trying to do, but in on-premise, um, delivering all these great services um, on-premise. Uh, but the other thing we do is uh, we actually integrate with the public clouds as well. So we have a, a central self-service catalog uh, with uh, machine or application uh, blueprints. And these machines can be virtual machines uh, on the infrastructure platform that we deliver, or it could be on AWS or Azure. So all of a sudden, you, we're uh, giving you unified cloud management um, so that you can deliver the same experience uh, with the same governance and IT controls that uh, IT needs, but with the flexibility and agility that developers are drawn to when it comes to public cloud. Wow, okay. that, that sounds cool. great. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. I really look forward to seeing how uh, Hypergrid keeps growing and uh, maybe talking to you in the future on some of this stuff. Excellent, thank you so All much. Right. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. Thank you.